Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to another video and as always all praises and honor and esteem goes to Heavenly Father Yahuwah in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach but sisters I got a little message to share with you uh, actually two messages and I want to talk about um, just a little bit about my free gas uh, playlist is basically biogas <clears throat> and HHO gas and uh, we'll get into that in just a minute but let me get right to the two messages I want to talk about and one is probably a question y'all may have had is Sarah Abraham's sister so we're going to answer that question and we're going to answer another question. What is required of you by the Most High? So let's dive right in, brothers and sisters. And uh, this is not going to be a long video, so hold, hold on tight. This is Genesis chapter. Um, wait, wait, let me back it up. Let's go to chapter 11. And we're going to go to verse 27 through 28, no, through 29. Okay, it says, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in the in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Now, right here, notice that it only mentions that Milcah was the daughter of Haran, but what about Sarai? Sarai? What about her? It doesn't mention that here. So let's go over to the next chapter. And we're going to scroll down to verses 4 and 5. So Abram departed as Yahweh had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to the, to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. So, we have two people that's connected, right? We got Lot. Now look at this. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son. His brother's son. Which son? Haran's son. Now let's go back to um, previous chapter. Down here. Okay. Milka is also the daughter of Haran. So we got two people that's the son and daughter of Haran. Because remember, Haran died in a fire when he was uh, thrown in, into a, a pit of fire. And he left behind so far that we know of is two people, two, a son and a daughter. But we're going to find out a little bit more information in the book of Jasher and Jubilees. So let's go to Jubilees first. It says here in Jubilees, and in the 40th Jubilee, in the second week. Oh, sorry, this is Jubilees chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. And in the 40th Jubilee, in the second week, in the seventh year thereof, Abram took to himself a wife, and her name was Sarai the daughter of his father. Now, look at this, the daughter of his father. And she became his wife. 
and Haran, his brother, took to himself a wife in the third year of the third week, and she bare him a son in the seventh year of this week, and called his name Lot. So remember, Lot is the son of Haran, and Milcah is the son of Haran. Remember, Haran was burnt up. But guess what? Someone took them in into the family. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And a couple of people became Abraham's brothers and sisters. Hold up. Let's go to the book of Jasher. And this is going to kill it right here. This is Jasher, chapter 12, verse 44. And at that time, Nahor and Abram took unto themselves wives, the daughters of their brother Haran. There's your answer. Remember in Genesis, it only mentioned that Milcah was the daughter of Haran. But now we get in the other part of the story. We find out that Sarai is also the daughter of Haran. The wife of Nahor was Milcah, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. So Haran's daughters married Nahor and Abram's, I mean, and Abram. Y'all see what I'm saying? They were cousins. But, remember, Haran died in the fire. So those three children came underneath um, what is Abraham's father? T. Let me go back to Joshua. I forgot the father's name is T. Tira. Tira. Okay, Tira. Uh, pretty much took in. Uh, he ran. Daughters and sons. As you know, his own. That's how Abraham and his two daughters and his son Lot became brothers. And remember, Abraham took Lot underneath his wing when he left. So, this is the missing pieces, brothers and sisters. Was Abraham, Sarah's sister. Yes and no. Yes, that Tira took in his son's children for his children. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But that was still Abraham's uh, cousins. He married his cousin, Sarai. There it is, brothers and sisters. There's your answer. Take your notes. Anybody else need this question answered? You have the information ready for them. So now let's go to the question, what is required of you and Yah? For this, we got to go to Micah. Chapter 6, Micah 6 and 8. He have showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth Yahuwah require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy Alua, or thy mighty one. This is basically saying, love Yahuwah with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbors yourself. It's basically also saying, obey my law and such as commandments, and you will walk justly, and you will love mercy, and you will walk humbly before the Most High. Brothers and sisters, 
and let's go take a look at it. The result in um, Zephaniah. Here is the result, brothers and sisters. The remnant of Yasharal shall not do inequity if you walk justly. If you obey these laws, statutes, commandments, and be humble and love Yahweh. Here's your result of doing those things. The remnant of Yasharal shall not do inequity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Look at this result of walking in life. The Most High said, Choose ye life and live. These laws, statutes, and commandments brings righteousness to your feet, to your hands, and to your mouth and your mind that you will not have, that you won't do inequity, you won't have a deceitful tongue in your mouth. You won't speak lies. You won't. Displease the Most High, brothers and sisters. When you're in the Second Covenant, you're in the body of Hamashiach. You're partaking in the Spirit of the Most High, which would lead and guide you and teach you all things. Brothers and sisters. And when the Messiah returns, he's going to complete the second covenant in us by putting the law, statutes, commandments in our minds and hearts that we may do them as the scriptures say. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. And there you have it for those two questions. And uh, let's get to um, the biogas thing. So, brothers and sisters, I created this free playlist about free gas. And within this playlist, you can find out how to create your own biogas. And biogas is basically using food waste with a little water and uh, some type of um, accelerant that would accelerate the decaying process of the waste, food waste, where it would start producing gas. Um, it's kind of like what you do when you eat your food and you produce gas <laughs> and you, um, you know, have a blowout in the backside of yourself. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of what's happening with this biogas when you put the food waste in there and it can even be human waste as well and there's a video about that somewhere I don't think I have one here I just have one about fruits and vegetables uh, but there are uh, whenever, here it is methane as fuel Uh, you can use um, cow manure, any type of animal manure to create a gas. And there's a cleaning process too, where that gas will go through a, um, a bubbler and bubble through the water to kind of clean it. Y'all know what I mean? You won't get that harsh smell in your house. Well, um, if you're using it to burn or cook food or whatever, um, there's a process for that. But the um, vegetable and the other one is a lot cleaner. You can use it right away for gas. 
uh, for multiple purposes. So that's two ways to create free gas, especially if you're going to live off the grid, out in the countryside, or move into another country, especially in Africa somewhere. You you have all these talent and skills already in your mind and maybe practice up out here before you leave and go and you'll be able to survive wherever you go with these different talents and skills that you probably never thought of brothers and sisters it's good to uh, think about now a third way is to create HHO gas a gas generator which is basically brothers and sisters splitting water and turning it into gas with electricity. Water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. You got two hydrogens and one oxygen atom that come together to form water. Through electrolysis, the water is split. Therefore, the two molecules uh, break away from each other and become a gas. And you channel this HHO gas uh, you channel that into um, any you know a gas generator you can um, send it into um, a, a furnace to produce heat or um, a water heater to produce uh, hot water uh, the, a stove any type of stove um, whether whether it's a grill outside or uh, you, your regular stove inside the house or one of those gas top flat top um, portable units where you can take out uh, camping or fishing or whatever wherever you, you know what I mean you create um, a smaller device such as this one right here which this guy here uh, ordered a kit and he's following the instructions on putting this thing together and in the description box here there is a kit available for purchase you can purchase the kit the basic box kit put it together yourself or purchase the fully assembled kit right here and uh, the end result is uh, plenty of HHO free gas as long as you have you maintain the equipment and have water I mean you can get water anywhere and uh, there's also you have to put um, I think sodium um, I forgot what they call it. But anyway, it's, it's like a salt that helps break uh, break down that gas even faster. I mean, break the water down into gas even faster, brothers and sisters. So when a unit is done, uh, the gas produced come up here, come through this bubbler, and then go out to whatever device you need to use it for, brothers and sisters. And it can be used for multiple purposes. I mean, one guy even built one of these things and used it for welding. There are a couple of guys that used it to uh, run a car. You know, uh, the guy named Stanley Myers here, he was actually killed because he, he had a, um, he produced a, um, a car that ran on water with the same concept. But he produced enough gas to make that car run. Now, of course, you got to make adjustments when you use HHO gas. So you, you really got to study on this before you use it. Because uh, the timing is a little bit different with the implosion of the uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen implodes. It doesn't explode. Implode means it draws it into itself explosion mean it, it it blows out outwardly but hydrogen 
implodes into itself, brothers and sisters. Uh, even though it's highly flammable, it's not as dangerous as gasoline, which explodes. So you want to do your own homework or research before you start digging into all of this. And uh, check with your local county, state laws. And uh, see if this is something that is legal to do in your area. And always, uh, if you know, if you do one of these devices, you may want to want to... Uh, Someone who normally hooks things up and, you know, take a look. Or just watch a lot of videos about plumbing and sealing up pipes. And and make sure that you got it set, brothers and sisters, and done professionally. See how this looks professional? Not all tore up looking, ghetto looking, duct tape hanging all over the place. Nah, you want professional work. Because you don't want to blow yourself up or your family or start a fire. You know what I mean? It's the same with anything in any household. I mean, you want to be safe. Especially, uh, brothers and sisters, if that house ain't yours, then you need to protect the uh, person's property. And uh, be sure to check out my other two playlists, Free Energy and Free Water. I think we all need to be diving into that, and I'm, I'm going to be working on my free food playlist so that uh, you can have some videos that will start you off growing food for yourself. I think we all need to start doing that, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, I think we all just need to start researching and coming back to living sustainably like we used to it and not so dependent on a system that could fail you any time, brothers and sisters. I mean, we, you know, we, we got away from the, the horse and carriage, right? For cars, which require gasoline. Now, they're saying that gasoline is a finite resource so it will run out one day right and it costs to fill up that tank so if you were to experiment a little bit and if you are able to and change your car to run on water where well, water is plentiful and renewable don't think that, don't you believe that the Most High set up this earth to where water will run out? That is not our Creator. That's the other one talking, saying that water is a finite resource and it will run out. These people have lost their minds. But we know that Hashatan is opposite of the Father. The Father is abundance and He will provide for his children as he always had provided for his children brothers and sisters and watch out for these people who are selling solar panels to you you're going to spend 10 to 20 to 30 thousand dollars on these solar panels when with a couple of thousand dollars you could provide uh, a big enough gas generator Hook up one of these free gas devices to it and produce all the gas to feed into that gas generator and, and power your home. You can even build your own batteries, brothers and sisters. You can build your own batteries. And there are videos for that as well. Don't fall for this trickery and foolery right now. You can do it yourself. You can buy you a generator, a big enough generator, a whole house generator. It may cost you a couple of thousand. But if you build one of these gas devices and convert that generator to run off of that, 
you would have something that produced electricity to recharge your batteries that you built yourself and you made yourself in your garage and, and you'll be able to power your own home. Funder five grand. Three to five thousand. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's why you, you can mix and match these playlists. Free gas with free energy. Brothers and sisters. But anyway. I just wanted to put that warning out there. Uh, for, you know what I'm saying? And uh, get this information out to you so you can start checking out these playlists, especially, especially if you're going off the grid and you're going out in the countryside, brothers and sisters. So check out these playlists and uh, let me know what you think about all this in the description box below. I mean, the uh, comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say shalom.